Welcome to our lecture online. When I did this the first time, I made a mistake. I made a mistake because, well, usually we make mistakes because we don't pay close attention, but quite often we make mistakes because we get a little lazy and we don't put everything down in a very systematic fashion. So here we have what we call a 30, 60, 90 degree triangle. We also, since one of the angles is a right angle, we can use the what we call the Pythagorean theorem, where we know that a squared plus b squared equals c squared. The sum of the squares of the side equal the, the hypotenuse squared. But since b is opposite to the 30 degree angle, so b is the opposite side to this angle, using trigonometry, which of course is a little bit beyond what we do here in algebra, we can say that the sine of 30 degrees is equal to the ratio of the opposite side to the hypotenuse. In this case, the opposite side is B and the hypotenuse is C. And it turns out that the sine of 30 degrees is equal to 1 half. So therefore, 1 half equals B divided by C or C is equal to 2B. And that's the relationship I missed by doing this quickly in my head without actually writing it down. And then when you don't write it down carefully, yes, we can make silly mistakes. But now we're also supposed to find B and A because we have this relationship. So how do we do that? Well, we do it as follows. We're going to take this equation and solve it for A and take this equation and solve it for B in terms of the other variable C. Since we don't know what A, B, and C are equal to, we just have to do it in terms of the other variables. So let's start with A squared plus B squared equals C squared and then moving the B squared to the other side. So we have a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. And now let's move the b to the other side. So we have a squared is equal to c squared minus b squared. And then, of course, I know what b is equal to in terms of c. I can say that b is equal to 1 half c. So I can then replace b by what that's equal to. And so a squared is equal to c squared minus the quantity 1 half c squared. If we do that, well, this becomes equal to c squared minus a quarter c squared, which is equal to 3 quarters c squared. So now moving back up here, we can then say that a squared is equal to 3 quarters c squared. And now, using the square root method, we take the square root of both sides. That means we can take the square root of the left side and the square root of the right side. So that means that a is equal to the square root of 3 times c, and of course the square root of 4 is equal to 2, and now we have a relationship between a and c. We can also do a relationship between a and b. We can say, well, what is a in terms of b? So if we do that, we can then go ahead and do the same thing right here. We can start over here and write that a squared is equal to c squared minus b squared, but now instead of replacing b in terms of c, we're going to write c in terms of b. c is equal to 2b. That means that a squared is equal to the quantity 2b squared minus b squared, and so a squared is equal to 4b squared minus b squared, which is equal to 3b squared, now if we take the square root of both sides, we have a is equal to the square root of 3 times b. And there's another relationship between a and b, as well as between a and c. We have a relationship between b and c. Now we're we missing anything. Let's see here. We have a and c, a and b, b and c, c and b. I could now find c in terms of a. So when we take this, we can then go and write this as um, 2 times a by cross multiplying the 2 over here is equal to the square root of 3 times c. Then dividing both sides by the square root of 3. So that cancels out. So we end up with c is equal to 2a divided by the square root of 3. But yes, as one of the viewers indicated, you shouldn't leave a radical in the denominator. So let's multiply both the top and the bottom by the square root of 3. And so that means that c is equal to 2 times the square root of 3 times a divided by the square root of 3 times the square root of 3 is simply 3. And that would be another way in which we can express c in terms of a, c in terms of b, b in terms of c. Oh, we don't have b in terms of a yet. Let's do that. All right. So here, using this equation, 
we can then go ahead and move the square root of 3 over. We can write that b is equal to a divided by the square root of 3. But again, let's multiply both the top and the bottom by the square root of 3. That means that b can be written as the square root of 3 over 3 times a. And now we have the relationship between a, b, and c in any combination you like by simply solving for that same equation. But again, we don't make mistakes if we go systematic and careful, and that is how it's done. <laughs> no mistakes. Hopefully no mistakes. <laughs> the viewers will point them out.